All right, praise the Lord. Just want to uh, thank everybody for all the help that you uh, that you gave over the last couple of weeks. There's been a mountain of work uh, done, um, both moving out of there and moving into here. So, so all those that um, contributed to all that, thank you very much. All right. Um, we're going to open in the book of Genesis, if you would. Chapter 1. Thought, seeing as we were having a beginning here today, maybe we should start right at the beginning. So, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, <clears throat> this is the point that God began preparing his plan for you. I guess in reality it began infinity ago um, because the Lord was uh, always around. But uh, I guess for, for practical purposes that this is the beginning of God putting his plan uh, into action and from this point on, um, the Lord's been uh, preparing everything um, for the return of Jesus Christ. And, and really, everything after this point is, is really um, getting to that, the return of Jesus Christ when he comes for his um, um, people. And so perhaps we're not always, um, you know, inherently aware of it um, at at each point in time, but really everything is constantly being prepared for that day. Um, things are coming into, things are coming to pass. Prophecies and all these sorts of, uh, all these sorts of things. In Corinthians, it says, "As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love Him. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea." the deep things of God. Um, and so, you know, the Lord doesn't want his plan to be secret, really, uh, what he's doing. We might know, not know or understand all of the, you know, intricate uh, details, uh, perhaps. But he, he does give us an insight into this preparation um, uh, that he's doing. And you've got to have the spirit for that. You've got to be inspirited to understand the preparations of the spirit and so the lord has revealed things unto us by that spirit and even then you know we look through that glass darkly don't we um but he does reveal you know certain things uh to us of course and so one of the things about the lord is that he is a meticulous preparer and um uh, we're not always that way but but god is he he prepares to the nth degree every every step in the preparation is perfect and so his plan is perfect and we know of course that it's going to uh, to come to pass he doesn't fumble around uh, there's no changing his mind there's no oh no what should i do now nothing nothing like that the plan has been ordered right from the beginning praise the lord now if you want to go to the book of psalms now psalm 23 i did read this out of month or so back but anyway <clears throat> the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i'll fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord uh, forever. So if you haven't guessed already, uh, I'm talking today about uh, preparation. And um, even when our senses uh, might tell us otherwise, we know that the Lord has laid out all the blessings that heaven contains. And so we live in this great feast um, a feast of blessing, a feast of grace, a feast of mercy uh, that the Lord has 
um, are given to us, a table of, of healing, a table of provision. We heard about provision in the testimony, didn't we? Um, and I guess most importantly, um, a table of, of, of thanksgiving. Um, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And so the Lord's in the preparation of business for his people. Um, and this salvation is kind of laid out for us. It's, a, it's this great feast, like a Thanksgiving Day feast, when uh, we've all turned up to Thanksgiving Day feasts and probably eaten more than we normally would or should. Um, but it's kind of what you do because it's all on offer. Everything is on offer. And that's what it is like with the Lord. Everything is always on offer uh, for us. And so uh, being anointed with the Holy, the Holy Ghost and fire, it fills. We're spirit filled. You know, we're not sort of spirit, you know, trickled or a little bit in the bottom or something. We're spirit filled. And so it fills your life. It fills your being um, so that there's no... Uh, there's no room for anything else, and um, you know you get that you get that feeling of being full, you know after a great meal, and you might go and sit down and and uh, watch telly or doze off or something, whatever you might uh, you might you might do. And so um, it's what it's like. It's this great it's this great spiritual feast and meal that we get. Um, uh, Sometimes we think to ourselves, oh, I'm so full, I'll never eat again. Uh, but, but you do, uh, of course, uh, naturally, but most importantly, uh, spiritually as well. We know that Jesus went to um, the Feast of Tabernacles. And um, in John 7, it says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. But this spoke here of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And so the people had made provisions for that particular feast. So they uh, had to sort of go out and make a, a, a temporary dwelling sort of thing, a booth, uh, as it's described there. Uh, and they had to get all their stuff organized and ready for this particular occasion. But Jesus was referring to something greater, something much more uh, meaningful than that, when uh, we would not just leave our house behind, uh, but we would leave our old life behind um, and, uh, and, and walk on uh, with the Lord, not going back to the old house as, as they did after that feast. We, we don't go back to that old house. We, we're in the new house. Um, and he's referring to this feast that's being prepared uh, uh, in the not too distant future from this, from this event, that, that the Holy Ghost was uh, not far away from being made uh, available. So even in, in this little sentence here, we see that Jesus is revealing God's plan and purpose and, uh, and the preparations uh, of it, that, that preparations are being, are being made there. Now, if you go to Luke, Chapter 3, Luke, chapter 3, verse 1, says, Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Echeria, of the region of Trip. Trachonitis and Lysanias, the Tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, uh, in the wilderness. And so uh, of all the people that God could have chosen perhaps to be, um, uh, to be the preparers, um, who could I choose to announce the coming of my son? Who can I choose that maybe, uh, uh, you know, make sort of a big impact? I could, uh, I could call on Caesar himself or uh, uh, the governor there, Pontius Pilate, or the other tetrarchs, the other governors there, uh, Herod and what have you. Well, maybe the high priest, the religious leaders, if I call them, you know, people are going to be uh, listening because they're the religious people. They should know uh, everything. They should know what's going on. But he doesn't do that. He chooses, as we know, a... Uh, a nobody, uh, someone that's sort of eating locusts and 
and all this sort of thing out uh, out out in the wilderness uh, out in the wilderness there. Um, um, let's uh, we'll keep reading there. Uh, and he came unto all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths uh, straight. That word prepare there uh, means to, to, make, to make ready, to make something ready or to prepare or to provide uh, something. And so the time had come um, to make ready, to prepare for the ministry uh, of uh, of Jesus Christ, we read that he he gets you know baptized himself a little bit a little bit later on there, um, and it was to be not this sort of random uh, sort of chaotic event, but it was a sure, uh, deliberate time of three and a half years when Jesus was uh, in preparation for what he'd spoke about in John chapter seven about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Um, he's preparing his disciples um, to receive the Spirit, to move out from Jerusalem, to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, um, you know, to go to the highways and the, by, the byways, to go all the way from, from this place to, to Australia, to Athens, Georgia, to the wherever. Um, he was preparing the way so that this gospel would travel the world that it would be made known to anybody who would want to um, who would want to uh, to know it. He was preparing them to prepare others as he's prepared us to prepare others uh, that we haven't even uh, haven't even uh, uh, met yet. And so there was going to be this deliberate preparation. The Lord was going to make this way something very deliberate. Um, and of course, it's no not by chance that he uh, he called this particular man and not not the big wigs not the religious leaders not the political people but he called this particular person here now if you go to uh, the next chapter um luke 4 verse 1 and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness and being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended he afterwards hungered, and the devil said to him, If you be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And this happens two, two more times. And so Jesus here is preparing himself. So before he, he commences his ministry, he strengthens himself. He, he makes himself uh, ready. Uh, he's, pa he's passing a test. Uh, the devil's coming along and saying, "Wow, you can have uh, all of these, uh, all of these kingdoms, even, or you can serve me, and I'll give you everything." Um, kind of approach. But he was testing himself to make himself ready for things that he knew were to come. Three and a half years uh, uh, down down the track, and so he he resists the devil, and the devil. Uh, flees uh, flees from him. He goes to Nazareth, and they they open up the scroll, don't they, in the synagogue? And in verse eighteen, he reads, uh, "This is Jesus reading out of the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year." Uh, of the Lord and so he goes out to do all of these things and he, he, he wastes no time from this point on the three and a half years are saturated with all of these things coming to pass preaching the gospel healing provision um, recovering of sight to the blind to set the captive free from whatever was uh, whatever the captive was um, in our day and age, a lot of the, a lot of times the captive is between our ears, um, and to preach this acceptable year uh, uh, of the Lord. So he went out to preach the gospel, but first he 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 prepared himself, as we've got to 
uh, as we've got to prepare uh, ourselves. He went out uh, as the disciples went out, uh, not with pamphlets or anything like that, but they just went out and, and talked to the whosoever. Paul goes down to riverfront, so all this sort of thing. Um, when you get on a plane, I think they still do. I haven't been on a plane for so long. I guess they still do this. But they tell you to fit your own mask first. If there's an emergency and the masks come down, uh, they get you to fit your own mask first. Now, why do they do that? Well, it's so that you can be useful. Because if, you're, if you've passed out from lack of oxygen, uh, you're not going to be of any use to, to anyone. You'll be a hindrance of anything. So you put your own mask first so you can be uh, useful in an emergency. What greater emergency could there be than the saving of somebody's soul? And so if we're going to be uh, uh, available to do that, then our own preparation um, uh, has to happen as far as uh, understanding the things of God and knowing the things of God and knowing the word and, and, and living that life and all of, those, all of those good things. In Peter it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And so we, we prepare for that and, and, and other things, of course. We've got this hope in us and uh, we want people to ask that question. Why are you so happy in the face of dot, 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 whatever, whatever it might be? Um, and so we, we sanctify the Lord uh, in, our, in our hearts. And, uh, and, and we've been given this great commission. As he was given a commission, so have we been given this, uh, this great commission, this great vocation um, as well. Now, if we go to chapter 12, we're still in Luke, chapter 12, and verse 16. And he, that's Jesus, spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I'll pull down my barns, build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I'll say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which you have provided? So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich um, uh, towards God. That word there, uh, are those things which you have provided, is the same word as prepared. The things that you've prepared, the things that you've thought about. Um, how best can I look after all the things that are very important to me? I need to build this bigger, uh, this, this, this bigger barn. I've got to look after this stuff that's all so very uh, important uh, to me. And, of course, the world is absolutely obsessed with, this, with that question. What shall I do? Uh, I've got no room where to bestow my fruits. And so I'll build bigger. I'll build greater. Uh, whatever it is that we might, uh, that we might do there. Um, and so the Lord is sort of saying to him, well, you've done a lot of preparation here buddy, but uh, it's, uh, it's not going to work for you because tonight's the night that um, your soul is going to be required of you. Uh, you've kind of wasted your time on all this effort um, that, uh, uh, that you've been providing for and preparing for, but they're all the wrong things. And we want to make sure that we're never caught out uh, providing certainly solely for the wrong things. They're not really wrong if you, you know, you've got to go and make yourself a, a dinner or something. None of that's wrong, of course. But he was really focused on this. This was his life, what to do about all of these things. In Proverbs chapter 30, it says, the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. And so we are in preparation mode. Every day of our life, really, we're in pre preparation mode um, for the coming of Jesus Christ who's coming back for the overcomer, for those that will not waver, for those that no matter what gets in their way, they're not going to be deterred. They're not going to turn to the left. They're not going to turn to the right. They're going to allow the Lord to uh, get rid of that mountain that's, um, 
uh, in front of them. This guy was making preparation, but for temporal things. Um, the Bible talks about that. We don't look for things that are temporal, but for things that are uh, eternal. And this guy, along with many others, was, uh, uh, was doing that, preparing for things that aren't going, uh, aren't going to last. There was a time when the disciples um, asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast out this uh, devil from the boy who was throwing himself into the fire? You know, well, why couldn't we do it? You did it. Why couldn't we do it? And Jesus said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. What did Jesus do right before the devil uh, was tempting him there? Uh, those three times. He, he was on a prayer and fast for 40 days. Gosh, that's a long time, isn't it? Uh, and so, but he was preparing himself because he knew what he knew what was to come. He knew that he had to make this preparation. So these things goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So we need to be in preparation mode, as Jesus was all the time about those about those things. All right, we're going to go out of Luke now. If you come with me to Hebrews chapter eleven. In verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So Noah is one of the uh, the, uh, the people in the, in the Hall of Fame, as we might call it here. And uh, he was told to go and uh, build, this, uh, build this boat, build this ark, and uh, he got on and, and, and did it. The word prepared there, uh, prepared an ark, is different, a different word. Um, this one means to construct something or to, uh, to prepare very thoroughly. So to do something exact, like to, 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 to follow a blueprint or to follow instructions. Um, yesterday, Julie and Rebecca put together a big white cupboard out there and uh, they did a terrific job of it. But there was a set of instructions that I'm assuming <laughs> they followed and uh, you followed the instructions and you, get, and you get the result. And that's what happened with Noah. He followed very thoroughly his instructions and um, uh, he and his house uh, were, were saved. He, he did it. Uh, carefully, thoughtfully, reverently, and and with a determination that he was going to get every single thing right, the size of it, all of that stuff that he was told how to, what to do. And he prepared it, even though he wouldn't have really, I guess, understood exactly uh, what was going to come uh, to pass. He knew he had to do it. He knew the Lord had commanded him. Uh, but the understanding of it didn't matter. He knew that God had commanded it and, uh, and, and uh, it worked out, of course. We're called to examine ourselves um, as, we, uh, as we are being careful and thoughtful and reverent and all of those uh, things. Um, he prepared it because he believed what God had said. Well, do we believe what God says? We've got this book in front of us and we read it and uh, it's either, you know, it's either 100% true or it's not true at all. Well, we believe, of course, it's the word of God. And so it's 100% true. It's infallible in every single way. If there's something that doesn't make sense to us in there, it's not the word of God's fault. It's our fault. We've got to, uh, we've got to look into those uh, uh, things, of course. Um, in John 14, he says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He's preparing somewhere that we're going to go, that we're going to be with him. Not separated from him, but with him. Where I am, there you may be also. And uh, um, here he is. If I go, I'm going to prepare this place for you, that when I come back, that... Uh, we will be together. I'll be. I'll take you there. Praise the Lord. Um, let's see. Let's go to Second Timothy chapter four. 
Ups, tutta. Second Timothy, chapter 4. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves uh, teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Isn't that happening? Just every single day, people are moving away from things that are true unto things that are just fables, just, just uh, stories. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy um, ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight, finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love uh, his appearing. How was Paul able to be seemingly so, so confident in what he's talking about in these few verses? Um, they say that Timothy was the last book uh, that he uh, that he wrote there. Um, how how was he so uh, confident about the things that he's saying? You don't sort of hear any wavering in his voice, do you? Well, it's because he'd been preparing for that day from the very day that uh, that he received the Spirit was baptized. Um, all that time he'd been preparing. His whole walk in the Lord was to make sure that uh, he was ready. When, uh, when the Lord returned. He may not have known the exact circumstances, but, uh, uh, but he knew that uh, uh, the time of reckoning for him was, uh, was at hand. And so his life was one great preparation to get himself ready uh, to meet the Lord when he, uh, when he returns. And, um, you know, he responded to the gospel he, he preached the gospel um, and he was faithful in adversity, in jail, in being beaten, shipwrecked, uh, whippings, all of those things that, that, uh, that he went through, stonings. And, and through it all, um, he, he never wavered um, in, the, in a jail in the, in the stocks there and, uh, and, and they start singing. Great, it's a great story, that isn't it? That they start singing. Um, uh, so yeah, that's what we need to be. We need to model ourselves after that, that. That preparation. He obviously was on solid ground, Paul, through his preparation, and we want to make sure that we're on solid ground. Yes, we've come to the Lord, and yes, uh, Jesus is our rock and our foundation, and all those sort of things. But we're told, be careful how you build. You might have that foundation, but be careful how you build. And Paul was one who was a careful builder, but he was a voracious builder. He 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 built and built and built right up to the right up to the end there, didn't he? Praise the Lord. All right, Romans thirteen. Romans chapter thirteen. And verse 11. Uh, and that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armour of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in writing and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfil the lusts uh, thereof. Don't, don't prepare for the things of the world. Um, you'll do the things that you've got to do, um, but we're not in preparation for that being our goal, 
Our goal is not this life. Our goal is not this world or the things in it. But we're called to prepare for something far greater than that. Jesus Christ is coming back. We know we live in the last days. And um, you, <laughs> it's funny, you know, in the 80s there, we used to think, oh, it couldn't possibly get any worse than this, you know. And uh, there's the famous talk of Pastor Darrell right at the end of 1983. I'll never forget it. He goes, well, you know, Christmas camp's coming up and we're looking forward to 1984. We might not even see 1984. The Lord might be back by then. And we're like, oh, beauty. You know, I was sort of six months in the Lord and, oh, this is going to be good. Come back now. Well, that's um, 41 years ago, almost now, uh, that he said that. And here we are. We're still here. Um, it's certainly got worse. There's no doubt about that. Um, but that doesn't mean we stop the preparation. In fact, it means the opposite. It means that we should be preparing uh, even more, even even stronger, uh, perhaps. Um People are good at preparing for many things, laying up treasure on the earth. People are very good at it. And even the ones that aren't very good at it, they always are thinking about it. Uh, they may not just be very uh, adept, uh, adept at it. That, um, you know, it's high time to awake out of sleep. If you haven't been preparing when you know you should be preparing, then it's not too late. The Lord hasn't come back yet. Uh, get on and and prepare, because our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. For some of us, it's a lot. It, it's a a lot long ago that um, that we first believed, you know. But the day is coming. We don't know the day nor the hour, but we know we've got to be preparing for it, because the alternative isn't worth thinking about, is it? Um, in Second Peter it says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. We've got to be diligent in our preparation for the life uh, that's to come. In Revelation 21, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. When... Uh, a bride is getting married, as brides tend to do, they get married, uh, they, they prepare. And there's a lot of preparation, not even just on the day, but leading up to the wedding, there's, there's a whole range of preparations that have to be done. The dress, the hair, the bridesmaids, the, all those things that, that, that have to be done, you know. Um, lots of stuff that people, rightly so, pay good attention to. Well... Uh, here is John saying, I see New Jerusalem coming down, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. We want to be prepared as that bride, the church, prepared as that bride for our husband man, Jesus Christ. Um, all things are now ready and prepared for God's uh, people. God, God doesn't really believe in, uh, in uh, recycling as such. Um, everything that's prepared by God will be like nothing we've ever experienced before. In that Revelation 21, he says, Behold, I make all things new, especially ourselves. We will be new, new creatures. Praise the Lord in, um, in Christ. In Mark, Jesus said, Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house comes, at evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning lest coming suddenly I find you sleeping, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch, be vigilant, make sure that your preparations are being done um, all the time. In Matthew 25, it says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Wow. Wow. When we hear uh, uh, those words, come ye blessed of my father, I've got this uh, kingdom here and it's prepared just for you. I, I prepared it just for you. Did you prepare to make the journey? It, I've done all the preparation. Have you prepared to come with me? Uh, because everything's, everything's ready for you. You've got to make sure that you're uh, ready yourself. So from way back, in Genesis chapter 1, 
a kingdom has been prepared for you and I um, to inherit, to be a part of. Um, who paid for it? Who paid for these new premises? Well, Jesus paid for them, of course, by his sacrifice that we're going to remember uh, in a minute there. And so we're called to uh, abide. We're called to, to trust. We're called to make the preparations. And the Lord will even help us with the preparations as we're praying to him for whatever it is that we need. He'll help you with the preparation. He doesn't just sort of leave us alone and go, well, you just get on with it and see how you, see how you run with it. And when we get to the end, I'll tell you if you've done any good or not. It doesn't work like that. The Lord uh, uh, is with us and, and revealing his truth unto us so that we, we know. Chris said in his testimony, I didn't want to believe it just because somebody else said something. I wanted to know. And uh, I think most of us were in that boat. Um, there's no way known that I would have probably even lasted five weeks in the Lord if it was just something that, oh, this guy over here, he's a, he's a good guy, he's my friend, he told me that, so it must be true. You just wouldn't last. It had to be a personal, tangible experience. And we knew that we were in preparation mode, praise the Lord. And so abide in it, trust in it, but above all, prepare for it. And all the people said, Amen.